So this week has been pretty good. I've been teaching all week, but on Thursdays there's pool night. So I go down to the Yaori area and I play pool with my friends. In Korea, um, besides video games, um, one big thing, or two big things I should say, um, that people partake in after work is either something called a norebang, which is just like a karaoke room, or pool. Um, in Korea they play something called four ball. I'm not sure what it's called in Korean, but it's one cue ball and then you have like two red balls and a yellow ball and you have to like with, with one shot you have to like hit one red ball then the other one and then have it swing around and hit the the yellow ball um, it's pretty hard there's no holes in the table for the balls to go down it's just that's what the game is but anyways my friends and I we just played regular pool and that was fun then we went to um, a club called or the, a bar called um, the Metro and that was pretty nice too. Um, some things that I noticed when I came to Korea is I figured that I'd be speaking um, a lot of Korean all the time. I figured I'd, I'd learn it really fast since I have to speak it all the time. But you can pretty much get away for years um, living here without speaking a word of Korean. Of course, there you know there's a basic set of basic set of vocab that you you know, you need to know just for convenience. Uh, but for example, this weekend I went to uh, an area called uh, Songtan. And that's an area that's right next to a U.S. Air Force Base. And one thing about that area is that it's very Americanized. And things like goods from the base, the U.S. base, they get smuggled into the, that little area. So you can go there and purchase a lot of... Um, U.S. products like uh, you know Lucky Charms, Apple Jacks. Me myself, I picked up a nice bottle of uh, Heinz ketchup. I'm probably gonna uh, pick up some potatoes on my next trip to the grocery store. But uh, getting back to speaking Korean, to get to anywhere um, in the taxi, all you have to say is like the name of the place, like some kind of keyword, like uh, Home Plus or you know, Yaori or something like that. And then once you get there, um, you can just say something like McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts or KFC, and then they'll just like drop you right there. Um, um, for the Korean that you need to know, um, it's basically just Winchuk, Orenchuk. You know, you can also throw in Yogi, uh, Yogi Mida, or um, you know, Kamsa Mida, something like that. But really, it's very simple. Um, in Songtan, we, my friends and I, we walked around for a bit just to, they were kind of just showing me the area and they were just shopping as well, um, just like a DVD place where they, you can get like a bunch of DVDs, um, English DVDs, American DVDs. Um, we got some Thai food, which was pretty good. I got the uh, Tom Yum soup, which is my uh, my favorite dish, or my favorite soup, I guess. And then today, I was playing in a soccer match. It was the Weikuken, you know, the foreigners versus the locals. And we played three games. They're more like scrimmages because we played three half an hour games, and they were pretty good. Not gonna do it this time. Can you save? <gasps> yes! Woo! And I got it on videotape. Awesome. Some general observations that I've made is that when you living in Korea, you want to have a pair of shoes that you can take off like quite easily, because when you go anywhere, like let's say if you go to a restaurant or something like that, um, there's a good chance that you're gonna have to take off your shoes if it's like a sit-down restaurant. And also when you go to anyone's place, you know, you have to take off your shoes. Um, so that's one thing that I know. So another thing is that there's no tipping. So, you know, when you get out of the taxi, you pay exactly what it is. Or um, a restaurant even, you know, you pay exactly what it is. I tend to just leave a little bit of a tip. Just because, you know, things are, if it's like 1900 won, I would just give 2000 won and just call it a day. 
especially in the taxi, it's like 2001, it's less than two bucks, so I mean, I don't know. So I got two new things for my apartment. The first one is this web map. And then the second thing, let me just, is this drying rack. My washing machine is only a washing machine, it's not a dryer, which is normal. So you hang your clothes up here on this thing, as I mentioned in the last episode, in the other episode. And then you uh, hang your clothes on this drying rack. It cost me about maybe uh, nine US dollars or so. One thing that I'm still working on for my apartment is just getting some tables in here so that I can have some table space. So what I did for my cell phone slash alarm clock is I just made this little pouch, you know, it's just made out of paper and I scotch taped it to the wall and in the morning when it goes off um, I can check the time by just going like this and it just tells me the time. So I guess in maybe some of the later episodes you'll see like a table in here and I'll just put it on that like a nightstand but that's what I'm working with right now, so. Anyways, um, some people have been requesting more Mr. ESL episodes. I guess I'm not putting them up fast enough. Um, so what I'm going to start to do is make these like half episodes. So this is episode 7. I'm going to probably make a 7 and a half um, if I can. I don't know. I'll see what I can do. But uh, thank you for watching. Thank you everybody for sending me questions and sending me emails. And um, I'll see what I can do. Take care.